So we're going to go over how to actually manipulate our forms in Editor X. So all I've done really quick is I have gone to our Add Elements Contact Forms and just dragged out a contact element form just like this. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And so what we're going to talk about is how to add different elements to our contact form, manipulate where our different fields go, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to go ahead and do first is I am going to add in a selection of radio buttons. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to click anything here and I just want to get to the Wix forms here, add new field, and I am going to look for our basic fields and I'm going to add a checkbox field just like this. And there's obviously different things. There's radio, there's checkboxes. So maybe I will, because I'm answering for a friend, <laughs> I will use uh, radio just like this. Or maybe I'll add a couple. All right, so really what I'm looking for is here. So I'm going to delete the rest of them, but just wanted to show you guys how you could do that. Now, if I wanted to move this, for example, over here, I could totally do that. And another way we can manipulate these things is by using the grid. So where you can see this right now is I am selecting the radio button form field and I can place this because I have it selected. I can place it anywhere within the particular grid. Now what I could do for example is let's say I don't want this message. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Wix forms is smart enough to delete and actually uh, remove that entire grid section. And so now I'm dealt with this. What I could do is, let's say, in, for whatever reason, let's say I want this select option to go across both of these grid cells. I can do exactly that. So all I've done, and as we can see here in the inspector, all I did was hold shift and click this second grid cell here. So I can either do one side, other side, or hold shift and go to both. Now, again, I could do the same thing really for anything in this form. For example, we see this submit button. It's on the two grid cells across the width. I can do one side, other side, or holding shift, going across both. I can do the same thing. Send this email, put it here. It's kind of like puzzle pieces. I can put it over here, which really wouldn't make any sense. But for example, let's just go ahead and let's remove the phone. Let me actually, before I move the phone, I'm going to go ahead and take my email here. I'm going to put it up here, stretch it across both these elements here, delete the phone, and again stretch this across just like this. Now that we kind of have this done, we have the first name, last name, let's actually go ahead and remove last name too just so we can just make this a little bit easier for our users. And there we go. So far so good. I'm going to select not this section, but I'm going to select my Wix forms. Now, the easiest way to kind of understand how this works and how to manipulate this is when you click something, please look at your, you know, your breadcrumbs so you can see exactly where you are. Currently, we have selected the element field. So if I edit this field, I'm selecting and editing the email form piece element. But if I select Wix forms, which is a higher element in the hierarchy, I am now editing and have the ability to edit the form as an entire piece, add a new field element, edit the grid, so on and so forth. So editing the grid is just basically um, kind of what we see here. We can, you know, add new rows, things of that nature. Um, and what I like is it keeps the same uh, width and height that the other grid cells are as well. So I'm going to undo that, hit done. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is take a look at the responsiveness of this form. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I kind of just cycle through all these. I do want to center this form, this Wix form, just like this. And I'm going to do the same here as well. So I'm, like I said, I'm asking for a friend. And actually, really quickly, what I'm going to go ahead and do is on my other screen, I am going to open up <laughs> what my friend's question was. And I believe it was the responsiveness. So pretty much, for example, if you get into a, a pickle kind of like uh, this, or for example, you have, let's manage our choices. Let's make these like super long. Let's just edit the label choice. 
and we'll do um, choice alpha and guys I don't know the actual <laughs> Omega I don't know the order of these and then we'll just call this beta y'all can discuss in the comments what the actual um, order is I think it's Omega Alpha Beta I have no idea all right so I'm gonna go ahead and set those and what I'm trying to do here is I just want what I'm trying to do is make super extra long options here I'm gonna go ahead and label this again I'm just gonna what I'm trying to get this to do is have super long names so that when we get down to responsive breakpoints tablet and mobile you get weird stuff or let's say you know we have stuff like this where there's just not a lot of space let's say it gets scrunched this is why it's super important to use our grid cells to give our elements more space so hopefully this is helpful and that gives you some help with uh, how to you know not only customize your footers or excuse me not your footers your forms in editor X and uh, shows you just how easy it is to manipulate them for example I can very easily just pull this email down here I can pull this first name in these rows here just using my grid cell and I can take my radio buttons and just pop this puppy right up top here so Pretty easy stuff, very malleable, and I hope this helps. With that said, I hope you have an amazing day, and if you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I will see you guys on another EditorX tip in another video. Peace.